You know, they go, oh, he thought he could beat this guy. I never said that. I just, I just want to stand next no, to him no, and no. see where I compare. Yeah. You're cooking your food. You're cooking your chicken and eating it. You're doing something wrong. You know, so what, are you, what are you hiding for? You're looking your best you've ever looked. What do you Talk got about it? Right. Tell you, uh, <clears throat> I beat you at that Olympia or I placed higher. I'm just saying. Oh, that boy crazy. <laughs> <laughs> So this is his over way. I'm blasting. <laughs> All right. Well, Easy. listen, I'm waiting. I'm waiting because I, I know what I, I can still hear what they said last year. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Kenza, Kenza, what, Kenza, 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 what did they say last year? What 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 did they last year? Last yeah, year they, they said say last year. Oh, oh, gentlemen, man. thank you. Thank you very much for joining me. Appreciate you guys being here. Robin, what's up, man? Haven't seen you in a bit. Yeah, what's up, brother? How are you? I'm good, man. Damn, man, why are you turning to James Earl Jones? <laughs> <laughs> it's a long story. <laughs> Dude, what he's doing he's is he's, eating. He's, got he's turned into a voice. monster. Nah, he's turned into a monster is what he's doing, man. He is huge right now. We got to get him narrating on the Discovery Channel or something. <laughs> <laughs> Serious, that voice is intimidating, bro. We're working. We're working. <laughs> Dude, you are looking pretty big, man. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. I, I, I see that you got the camera angled because otherwise you're not fitting in the frame. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I got to show off the pedals and stuff over there. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. It, no, every no. single one of you guys are with it. Well, uh, uh, all of you are in prep right now. Tonio, you're on yeah. you're, you're the dire straits, man. You're only, what, three three weeks away now? Yeah, what is it? What, next Saturday's peak week? The 30th, right? Yeah. You got to be yeah. fired up, dude. Is this your oh, first international show? Yeah. I think that's what's keeping me going, though. You know, it's exciting. Dude, I'm happy for you. I appreciate you. Yeah, that's, that's, a, big goal. That, that's a big goal for me to do international show. That's so cool, man. Yeah. Yeah, I know they had the what what was the one that they got rid of? Um they had the Puerto Rico. That that would be a good Yeah, that's the one right there. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Yeah. I want well, to do that Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico's still the US though. Yeah, I know that's what I mean, because I did that show, but I don't really count it, you know. Yeah. So I ain't never been, so I'll win. <laughs> still beautiful though. <laughs> it's still right? amazing. Yeah. Hey, whatever happened to um Arnold South Africa? Is is that even there anymore? Like that's completely gone, right? Yeah, I think that's out. Mm. Yeah, that was a that was a few years ago. Now, yeah, the uh, the South America though is taking over, man. That like that's that's getting to be a very big show. You're gonna see you're gonna see a really good lineup this year. Okay. Yeah, well, Tonio, you're in. Uh, who else do I know is in? I thought Beirut was in, but apparently he's not. I got corrected on that. Um, Carlos Thomas Jr. is in this year, right? Yeah, good Vito's is in on that show. Yeah, good Vito, good Vito's gonna be there. Yeah, you'll see you'll see guys like probably Wellington Nescal show up and do that show. That's right in his backyard. He did it last year. He was standing toe to toe with Bay Ruse, and and he's put on a lot of size since then. Amir's yeah, probably they just well, put out. They just put out a list today. I think too. It was like eight people, including me. Eight. Yeah. That's it. You think you think it's gonna grow? Yeah. I think more people will come in. It's not too late. They have a week before the show to jump in. What about like um, Akeem? No, I didn't hear anything about him either. No? Okay. <clears throat> I would have yeah, thought yeah. Um, Akeem and uh, what, what's the guy's name? Oh, my God. I can't believe I'm drawing a blank. It's getting late, guys. It's past my bedtime. <laughs> but either <laughs> way... <laughs> I was I was sure Akeem would do it because he finished up so so much so much stronger than uh Ohio in um in the UK. He really brought his thing, he brought his mm -hmm. game together. Yeah, I was like, I like the size he put on too. I was always a fan of his physique. Yeah, like he his conditioning, he nailed it. I think that was the best version of him we ever seen. Yeah, he was right. really and he'll probably keep getting better too if he keeps going. I hope he does, man. I like seeing him on stage. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, it yeah. won't be. Uh, it won't be long. It's going to get right into the season, right after after the uh, 
you really have that that lull in the season between the Olympia and then the Arnold Ohio in the UK. And now it's going to start rolling where we got shows coming like just about every weekend, right? So it really starts to get exciting now. Well, so at, at three weeks, Otonio, you've been down there training in Brazil. You've been there for what? For, you, you did four weeks leading up to the show? Yeah, we've been out here for a month. So actually we came out here um, for a week and then I left and then I left for two weeks and came back again. So about a month and a half, we've been out here uh, training with Johan. So yeah, yeah. So what's what's happened like? Um, he's crazy. <laughs> like, uh, I'm telling you, like, I've never done so many working sets in my life, and um, it's like, all right, you get to the fourth, fifth set, and you did all these reps, you know, by yourself, and then he's like, okay, well, let's go heavier then, and to where you physically are having a hard time moving this weight, and now he's helping you get these extra reps, so he's force repping you now. And uh, that's something I never had, you know, like we were just saying, uh, I've never had a trainer before, you know, it's me training me. And when I'm tired, I'm like, okay, next set, you know, with him is like, yeah, we're going to do about another 10. His favorite number is five. So it's always five more. Oh, shit. He, he has a tattooed on his leg, by the way, five more. <laughs> <laughs> but that's you know, you're doing it now. That's yeah, hard you know going, you're doing it. Yeah, that it's is. crazy. That is, but it, it's cool. It's not, well, to look to look at to look at Johan, he looks like nothing, dude. Like to walk past the guy in the street, he looks he he looks like literally nothing. For a guy like that to be able to push the top athletes in the world, it's just insane to me. Like, and he's doing it, and even at three weeks old, he's still pushing you that hard. And that's something that I mean, that's got to be a crazy shock to the system for you. Oh yeah, there's a. Uh, I just got body work done because I man, I remember the first quad day we did when I was here. I'm still sore. You know, yeah, because so you have to, yeah. It, it, it's, it's been rough, but, I mean, I know it's happening for a reason, you know what I mean? Like, we're doing exactly what we have to do to accomplish what we came to do. And um, with, you know, him training me, I have Justin, you know, coaching me. I have Joey with uh, KJ Center Stage posing me. You know, we have a good team set up right now, you know, to, to uh, get this done. And so, I don't know, like, I'm just staying – off of social media for the most part as in engaging with the internet judges <laughs> you know i might entertain it a little bit just because if i if i have time you know i like to you know mess with people no, don't that, don't do know, it. Sit back. slippery slope right <laughs> yeah <laughs> keep, yeah keep pulling you back in <laughs> well it's, well, it's, it's funny because been... they use all my uh, old pictures they use pictures from new york you know and i'm there like in. i put on so much size so yeah, i don't know it's just funny can I ask you a quick question, Antonio? Yeah. What What's the climate like down there? Like, how is it? Is it crazy humid? Super humid. So oh. I walk to my fastest cardio. So I'll walk to the mall to go do cardio. And by the time I get there, I'm already sweating. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, you know what? I'm counting these as cardio. Like, this is going on. <laughs> <the time I'm... laughs> and then, you know, coming back to the apartment, the AC is in the living room. And I try to go lay down in the room. I'm like, no, nah, hell no, I'm sleeping on the couch. Couch. <laughs> oh, <damn. laughs> yeah, like, is the gym air conditioned? <laughs> um, man, barely. It's like uh fans, little fans blowing around. Yeah, so, so and, no, and it's it, not, no. No, it's the ones that rotate. So I mean you might get a, a good breeze, but other than that, no, it's over. Like you do a walking set and you just follow the direction of the fan. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's me, and man. Like, yeah, there's no rest, though. He's like, he'll look at you. As soon as it looks like you caught your breath, he's like, all right, again, let's go. And I'm like, dude, I'm about to die. Like, this weather, <laughs> the air feels heavy. You know, it feels heavy on yeah. the lungs. So it's like, it's, I don't know. It's like you're getting too much air. So it, it, it's rough. It was rough at first. Now I'm starting to get, you know, used to it. And, able to push a lot more now so that's why you're getting shredded so fast <laughs> yeah. sweating so much yeah. <laughs> so much bro it's crazy that's why i'm getting all these now, damn reefs. <laughs> <laughs> now i'm looking at you you got a hoodie on right now do you train with a hoodie no I, so i'll do cardio with a hoodie and sweats on Oof. Rough. yeah <laughs> that's do rough. A bit I like I'll that. Do some posing you know do some posing like that as well yeah. Um, I try to make my posing practice as hard as, you know, we can, you know, and like when I'm with Joey, he will, man, like we're holding poses for 
25, 30 seconds. And Ooh. each round will take off a few seconds, you know what I mean? Because, you know, no judge is going to pose you 10 times and make you hold it for that long. So if we could do it by ourselves, come stage time, like at New York, I'm going to smile. I'm going to break a sweat. Yeah. Yeah, that's the way to do it. You'll be ready. This is the best, this is the best we're going to see from you come uh, come two weeks. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. Like, no yeah. doubt. Um, I, th- I think you're there. I think you're ready there. Yeah, I mean, I agree with you. Like Olympia package wasn't yeah, it's not shit compared to what we look like now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think you're there, bro. It's one of those things yeah. where it's like the more lean you get each day, it's like, okay, let's do a little bit more cardio and see what happens. <laughs> okay, let's do a little bit more. <laughs> Five more reps. <laughs> <laughs> the, the progress is addicting, you know what I mean? So you just shoot for yeah. more. Is That's he gonna keep? Stuff, is he gonna man. keep pushing you like that? Like, are you gonna keep pushing this hard until like? Uh, is he gonna dial back a week before the show, the training, or anything like that? Like, do you guys have a strategy for that? Yeah, so we're gonna keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing, and on the first, Justin actually gets here, so they'll be nice. together, you know, working, uh, doing whatever they do together. You know what I mean? To uh, come up with a game plan because they talk every day since you know we've been here. And then I get to the gym, and then he's telling me what we're doing, what Justin said. So I'm sure when That's he's awesome. there, they'll have something figured out. Yeah. But I, I didn't know he was actually going to go down for the show. He's not just going to be checking you over the phone. He's going to be there to dial you in in person. That's that that's key, man. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. Justin is – that's one thing I really, really like about Justin. Um, man, he's, he's an athlete himself, but it's like uh, he's a coach first. And he's going to put his athletes who's getting on stage, who's in prep, they come before he does, you know. And uh, like today, he said he had a lot going on, but he was still reaching out and checking in on me. So, yeah. How, Justin, many, show, how many shows you done with him now? How many shows? Just uh, Olympia. So That's after it. New York in the summer of last year is when we got together. And then he prepped me into Olympia. And then we were going to do an off season, but because of where we placed Olympia, it was like, I felt that at some point. Like, let's keep going now. We're in the mix. Yeah. Let's stay there. Yeah. Yeah. Man. Good strategy. Dude. It worked. Uh, it's, yeah. it's working. I'm glad we you. did. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and, and then everything just... happens for a reason, right? Yeah. Hell yeah. I'm a firm believer in that too. Yeah. You know? um, yeah, man. Especially when you don't rush anything, you know, I believe, you know, that's God's timing. So yeah. with this prep here, this show, we weren't thinking about doing this, you know, Dragon Former presented. So in my eyes, I'm like, okay, this is the path God want me to take. I'm going to go all in. You know, that's how you give back. You know, you handle your blessings right. with the work. You know, faith without work is dead. So I said my prayers, now it's time to work. Yeah, man. Yeah. It's work. Awesome. Everything aligns, you know. Everything aligns when you believe. You follow the plan. And it's it's having that intuition to know when plans can change because it's okay if plans change. Or if they don't go your way, because something else comes along that's better. That's awesome, man. Really happy for you. I appreciate you. Appreciate you. Yeah, man. Appreciate that's I was I was shocked when I seen you were jumping in. I was like, what? I was like, you get ready for New York. You know, but then I saw the rate of acceleration that you started to shred up. I'm like, yeah, no, he's good. <laughs> he's good. He's going to be on point. <laughs> yeah, I'm you know, ready. I blame, I blame Nick for that, too. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, it ain't nothing wrong with it, man. You're where you're supposed to be. A couple of weeks, man. We'll find out where you stand on stage. Yeah, hell yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder what Nick's going to have to say about that. I, wa- I wonder. Yeah, I know I know. right now Nick is focused right now um, because he hasn't been jumping on my post lately. Yeah. You know, we had this thing going back and forth, but he's been silent, so I'm like, okay. I know, I know where his head's at right now. Mm-hmm. And you know, my head, I'm focused on this one right now. But as soon as this is done, I'll be I'll be back on the attack with him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, That's I actually good, watched uh, I watched one of Nick's uh recent uh videos that he put up and he says that you he usually does a lot of talking through his videos, but he specifically said in this video, he was like, I'm at that point in prep where you're not gonna hear much from me in these videos. I'm just here to train, I'll talk a little bit, and I'll talk to you guys after the show. So he's he is he's getting into that zone. You know what? Hold on, Kevin. Every athlete says that four <laughs> weeks out from the show, they can't shut up. <laughs> like, <I'm just> <laughs> every every athlete tries to get ghost, 
and then they see how good they look, they're like, no, nah, fuck that. I'm talking some shit. You know, I'm, like, <laughs> I'm putting it out there. That's so true. He's yeah. been talking. He's been talking shit, man. I mean, he's been back and forth on fu- people specifically go to Tonio's posts just to see what Nick's gonna say about it every shot. <laughs> and Nick hasn't been giving them shit lately. Yeah, guilty, I, man. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. It's entertaining though, man. You guys, you guys like are good for the culture. You know, I, I love that there's a friendly rivalry going on. And I mean, sometimes you know, bodybuilding can be dry. It's not like we're out there fist fighting or anything. So you know, we gotta have fun with it and. You guys are definitely keeping the people entertained. So kudos to you guys. Yeah, it's fun. Uh, like I told you know people before, uh, me and Nick we're we're cool. You know, we turned pro the same year. We both did USA's, and he uh, went to North Americans after that and turned pro. But I followed him ever since. Uh, every anything I needed advice with or wanted to know something, I mean, I went to Nick. You know, he told me a lot. You know, he's yeah. where I where I'm trying to get. You know what I mean? He's been doing this longer. And, you know, when you're, you don't know the game, you're a student to it. You know what I mean? So you find a teacher yeah. to listen. So um, I feel like age-wise, I'm older than him. But in this sport, he's older than me. So I'm being that annoying little brother <laughs> picking that up. <laughs> Wait, what's the age gap? Um, I don't know. Nick is like, what, 27, 28? What? Yeah, really? Nick, I don't think Nick is in his 30s yet. Oh he's, man, he's, he's, he's not quite there yet. He's twenty. He, he's twenty eight or twenty nine for sure. Yeah, I'm thirty two. <laughs> wow. Yeah, yes. Oh yeah. man, I feel like a grandfather, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy, crazy, man. Just, age, age is just a number, though. You know, it's all about say it again, feel. Robin. Yeah, age is just a number, baby. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> it's all about how you feel. <laughs> That's it. Just don't ask my knees any questions. Yeah, I was going to say, it's all, it's all about how your body feels, though. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. No, you guys are definitely holding it down, man. Keep doing what you're doing. Oh, yeah. We're going we, we, we gonna to turn up on this one. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I think this one, it, it, it's going to be big to bring this back home, you know, to the States. But um, all those, you know, those doubters, you know, those fear mongers that's out there, you know, shut them up, too. Yeah, it's, it's, good, that, to stay, it's good to stay, you know, it's good to stay lighthearted about all that kind of stuff, though. You know what I mean? Because there's always going to be the haters and, and that kind of shit. Like, that's just going to be, and especially the better and better you get, they're just going to be around more and more to try to bring you down. So always keeping that lighthearted, never never taking that stuff personally. You know, when you take that personally, it weighs you down, you know? But when you can have fun with it, like you guys are doing, I think it's great. Because like you said, Karen, yeah. that's the sport. Plus, it just, it keeps a reminder that it's like, it's not... It's not always so serious. Like a lot of the times it is, especially for us, but we have to keep that balance too. Yeah, facts. But I'll tell you, I'll tell you this though, right? Usually you're able to turn a blind eye to this, but let you have a bad day and see that right comment. Oh, it'll light a fire. It'll, it'll light a fire. I'll probably type five different responses and delete four of them. <laughs> one, one of them is getting sent out. Somebody's hearing something that day. But yeah. <laughs> Honestly, just just look at it this way, right? Look at it as the biggest form of flattery because a hater will go out of their way to find you, right? They don't like you or what you represent, but they will go find you just to talk shit. Dude, listen, that's the biggest compliment you can get. Yeah. You know, right. so, somebody had to go out of their way. You know, mind you, this is costing them money because they pay a phone bill, right? So <laughs> <laughs> you're actually on their dime letting them talk shit to you so you should be honored in a way oh yeah i mean like i said it's funny you know i'll entertain sometimes you know if i'm feeling it but um <clears throat> usually when they come tough it's like man i just hope you have a better day <laughs> and then they delete their comment <laughs> oh man that's, that's great that's great it's true yeah you, I don't you, know. Can't keep... you can never take social media serious you know especially no. when you've been you through much real shit like They'll never say it to you, bro. <laughs> right. Yeah. They'll, they'll never yeah. say it to you. It's just hilarious. You're Let right, them right. have their fun. Let them have their fun, you know. But I tell you, on that one day when when it's just not going right, let them have it. You you <laughs> you, you reserve the right to let them have it sometimes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Right, right. I know you guys oh, know yeah. what I mean. Yeah. 
Oh yeah. Oh man. I watched uh, I watched Patrick Moore do it a couple years ago. Somebody got I, I don't remember who it was that got under his skin, but somebody got under his skin and he just got on online and on Instagram and he just went off, man. And I'm telling like he went off. And the internet ate it up. Everybody was reporting on it like this guy is just flipping out. like that's the other thing. It's not just what you say, but who's going to say something about what you say? Guys like me, hey, yeah. right? Because I'm going to run with it too. <laughs> I'm running with it. I'm telling you right I love now. It. Yeah, people love it. Eh? <laughs> people do, man. People they do. do. Yeah. Yeah. They have no problem telling you either. No problem. So, Facts. but, but like you guys said, you guys are professionals, right? You guys know how to handle it. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe some better than others. Yeah, maybe some learn. better than others. <laughs> you learn over yeah. time, you know. He makes yeah. Mistakes, yeah. But yeah, yeah. you, you got to learn that. Yeah, yeah well, it, 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 it's okay to pull punches sometimes, you know. Oh sure, yeah. Just like you said, them last few weeks, you stay, <laughs> stay off the phone, stay off. So like, just be done with it. You're good. You could try. Right. I mean, yeah. I mean, like, you're, I'm you're not you. to... yeah. Because go ahead. Of those things where, like, if uh, you know, when they they talk or whatever, and they're like, "Oh, this person has a better," you know, right. whatever. It's like I'm not gonna be fun. I'm gonna just go hit, you know, chest, yeah, and pump like, and then I'm gonna show you what I look like. And now yeah. I'm the person like you told the other page. <laughs> yeah. And that and that's the best response right there. That's the best response, right? Right. At the, in the end of the day. I got one the other day, and this one resonated with me. And it was it was such a backwards compliment. Um, it was like, Yeah, that's great what you're doing. You should go check out what this guy's doing. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> 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 Hey, why do I need to check that out? Like I'm developing, things are growing, things are changing. Why do I need to go check his out? You know? Oh fuck. I hate, I hate those I hate the trolls that they'll leave a comment and then you try to comment back and it says you can't like comment back to them. I'm oh like, you, God. you motherfucker. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Anonymous the screen can't on comment my phone. Back. Like you're a you're a mother. <laughs> right? Yeah. And when it's like that, so you can't add them. So if you push reply under their name. And take away their app, it actually responds back to them. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's uh, right. uh, <laughs> see, you, you've, been there, you've been there a time or two. Here's a man that's <laughs> been there. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> he teaches you how to talk some shit. <laughs> <laughs> you got to navigate it, bro. Kareth, <laughs> you're, you're too far out of the show to be getting pissed off at people at this point yet, man. You oh, still got man. weeks. Bro, listen, my show isn't even the thing that's making me upset right now. It's just like the the eating videos that I put out. I'm like, bro, I'm just eating food. Oh, you should have ate more. Why? <laughs> <laughs> what <do> you, <laughs> you know, you shouldn't have ate that on your chip. Why not? That's what I wanted to eat. <laughs> that's all Everybody, you're Everybody's get. got an opinion, man. Everybody's so opinionated these days. They wanna they wanna feel like they're right about, about something. It just, you know, take a breather before you comment, I feel like sometimes. A hundred percent, hundred percent. But you know what, though, like you got to remember a lot of these people, they don't leave their houses. Their phones are stuck in their hand and they're probably, you know, in a corner of a basement somewhere. And listen, if that's your thing, cool, whatever. <laughs> Just leave, leave me the fuck alone, please. Yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> that's it. You know, like I'm out here trying to do good in the world. Like, I don't need you telling me I need to eat more burritos, you know, like, oh, God, I, Kenton, let me let me run with this one real quick, because I had this dude from like Germany or something. I don't know if you guys ever heard of this guy. His name is Gotis. No. Nope. Have you heard of him? No. All right. No. So you guys you guys know about the whole raw meat deal and how people are now eating raw meat as sustenance, right? Oh, yeah. So this guy has been arrested for eating like raw squirrels and shit like that and completely just tried to character assassinate me talking about how because I'm cooking my food, I'm losing 50% of the, the value of the protein. And like, I'm like, dude, take this fucking video down. Like, you don't even know me. His followers then attacked the shit out of me. I'm still getting responses. This is like two months ago. Every day I see a new response on YouTube that his followers are telling me, I don't know what I'm talking about because I'm cooking my food. But, you know, backstory. Um, he was charged with attacking his own wife and son with acid. So he had an acid attack put out on his kid. And they're going to co-sign with this guy and talk shit to me about me cooking my food. I'm like, bro, 
choose your battles wisely. You guys are following a blind leader <laughs> and you're out here eating raw chicken livers and all sorts of stupid shit. And you're going to try and preach nutrition to me. Like, bro, I, I, like, I body, uh, I body build, Jeffrey right? <laughs> but I, I, <laughs> I eat for a living. You know what I mean? Like, listen, I know what I'm putting in my body. <laughs> yeah, Dude, no, no, it, even, it's mind boggling, man. No, 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 no. Even if you're not a bodybuilder, even if you're a regular person, how can you say you're cooking your food and that's wrong? Yeah. You're cooking your food. You're cooking your chicken and eating it. You're doing something wrong. Who Dude, I feed my person. <laughs> I look him up. His name is Gotis. Let's put him on fucking I'm not blast, please. I'm not looking <laughs> him up here. I'll tell you that right now. I'll look him up later. I'm not giving him any more fucking credit. That's insane, dude. Like this is the, like I, that doesn't even make sense. Come on. I swear, I swear to you, Kenzen, this people and his followers are attacking me. Like, dude, I, I have no reason. <laughs> I have no reason to respond to this, but I tell you, like, I have to. I'm compelled to talk to these people and tell them shut uh... the fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> But either way, um, they, they attack not just me, um, pretty much any bodybuilder. If you guys go at them, they're on you. Trust me. These people are like the plague. But it's scary to know that people like this have the internet. Either way. It sounds like a cult. <laughs> yeah, no, that's exactly what it is, bro. It is exactly that. It is a cult. They, they stick together. They eat raw meat and do weird shit. I don't know. Pay without yeah. They said yeah. they, they they claim that my dog because my dog eats raw food, my dog is getting more nutrition than me. I'm like, bro, seriously? <laughs> like, yeah, I can't take a look it. at the fit. Now, now, here's what you got to do, Kareth. When you get closer to the show, give Lori your phone. That's going to be it for you, dude, because you can't handle it, dude. That's the end of it. All right, that's it. <laughs> just, that's just it. Not little, just not all those people give you free views, you know, monetize your channel with them, you know. <laughs> Something. I I don't know, man. These these people are crazy, bro. Like, yeah, I, like, I can't believe. So you I can't believe for them. <laughs> yeah, I can't believe YouTube will allow that to stay on air, and yet and still you post something with somebody else's music, and they're taking your shit down and canceling your channel. You know, let me not talk bad about YouTube, Kenzie. You might want to edit. I'm still trying to grow my channel. I'm still yeah, trying to for, grow my channel. Look for the algorithm. We love we love YouTube and everything that it represents. That we, right? we did our diligence. But I, I will listen. say, you know, YouTube is pretty good about weeding out like inappropriate comments and stuff. Like they're on it pretty quick, you know. So yeah, that, that's one. Must have forgot thing. about me, Robin. No, <laughs> you're, not, uh, you're not. You're not paying them any money yet. You got to monetize first, and then they'll care. Yeah, about yeah. You. <laughs> Probably yeah, right. That's what it is. Yeah. Well, Kareth, aside from actually cooking your food, how's the rest of your prep going? <laughs> oh, man, it is it is going great, Kenzen. Um, I don't know if you know this. Well, I know you know this now, but um, I'm working with Neil Hill now, and that is that is on the up and up. Um, shit, dude. I got to say, at this point in prep, being eight weeks out, we can even backtrack to 14 weeks out. I don't know if there was a time in prep that I was ever that in shape that far out from a show like at 14 weeks out i'm telling you i could have said give me two weeks i'm ready for it what, whatever it is how did that come to be though how did you end up working with neil hill of all people well backtrack circa 2021 after me and dave palumbo parted ways neil was the first coach that i reached out to at the olympia and he and I actually had a, a little meeting post Olympia. Matter of fact, the day after the Olympia, Neil and I were talking and we were supposed to get together. However, travel and other things just got in the way. And, um, you know, he has a ton of athletes under his roster. So we somehow ended up losing contact and it just didn't work out. But I had another coach in mind who was Justin Miller. Uh, you know, we had, a, you know, a few shows together that were pretty successful. Um, but yeah, you know, that situation just ended and, you know, come full circle, me and Neil connected again. We decided to, you know, really run with it this time and everything's on the up and up, man. I cannot complain. You know, that's my guy. That's the coach I want to work with. And, um, you know, hopefully we could bring it home this year, man. Feel good about this year. Well, I mean, that New York pro last year, that look, man, I mean, to be honest with you, I preferred your New York look. I mean, the Olympia was a great look, but if but if I was to pick one, that New York look was 
unbelievable, man. Unbelievable. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I'll say this. I'll say this, though. I was better at the Olympia. New York had better lighting. Tonio, talk to me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Olympia, I'm telling you. Depend. Yeah, black backdrops are the way to go. I don't know why they're not in every show. I'm telling you. Mm-hmm. I, I, t- I tell Steve all the time, like, we got a petition for this as athletes because it really showcases our look, having nothing on the background. Or if they're going to have a screen, just elevate it. Raise it up 10 feet. And show the black backdrop so the athlete's hard work can be showcased as it should be. It's been the at that it's the age old debate, man. It's it's been constant, constant. Even Bob Chicarillo had to come out and say something about it, where he basically said there last year, maybe it was year before, but he said, "There's no way in hell that that's going to happen." Because it was Fuad that actually came out when yeah. he and him and Bob had that back and forth, and he said, "Why don't we have black backdrops?" And Bob was like. Because sponsors need to put their advertisements in there. And I I don't disagree with that. But like you said, the New York Pro, there was the black backdrop there. But the sponsor still had everything there. It still showcased the athlete's physiques in the best possible way. There's no reason the Olympia couldn't do that. Get rid of the bullshit fucking, you know, lasers and fire backgrounds and LED. You can still have the the sponsors there. You know? Well, they change. They change because... I don't know if you remember this, Tonio and Robin. Um, they actually turned the screens off. I don't know if you remember that. They turned the screens off, but the, I, or I should say, they turned the display off while the athletes were competing. Ah, it was gotcha. still on. It was still on, so it looked like a grayish black, but there were no ads. You can go back and check this, but it was actually something that was said for finals. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Well, they, but it's what it's what has to be done. There has to be something better in order for you guys to be showcased. You know, a hundred percent. This is the biggest show in yeah. bodybuilding. It has to be. Well, done. What they what they did at the Arnold UK, like those pictures. Holy shit! Holy shit! Like they killed it. Even Ohio, they killed it. But mm-hmm. I, I can't see the Olympia not stepping up to meet that challenge. Like I, I know they're gonna. Jake Wood always rises to the occasion. And again, the Olympia is the best show in bodybuilding. So, you know, why not? Dan Solomon's an open book, too. He'll put it out there exactly what it is that he's thinking. And and the one thing that he does always put out there is his commitment to continue to progress the show in every possible way, including the production and making sure that the athletes are are shown in the best possible. He, he's talked about this a lot, right? And yeah. so they are going to continue to try and do better. Without a doubt, I agree with you. They're, they're not going to just settle. Yeah, matter of fact, Dan Solomon was the one that announced that they were going to turn off the screens and have a black backdrop last year. Yeah, yeah. There you go, man. There you go. You're not the so. Well, the Olympia is coming. The New York, I'm going to expect. You know, a, a pretty fantastic show, and especially mm-hmm. having both of you there again. You know, it was fun. It was double up. Double up. That's what people wanted to see last year because i remember it was actually uh my buddy uh mark's max muscle he did a comp i don't know if you guys actually said tonio i know you saw it i don't remember if you saw it Kareth. the comparison yeah between you no guys i know exactly where shows. you go oh when he compared us yeah <laughs> it's been out there it's been out there was- i'll tell you this when we're getting ready to tan i saw tony i was like bro you look good right now you're about to win the show and you know what he looked at me he's like bro you look good right now you're about to win the show <laughs> <laughs> Man, so yeah, it was awesome though, and I, I'm flattered that they would compare the two twelve guy to an open guy. But Tony, I love you. You're an open guy. You're still a two twelve guy to me, bro. Oh yeah, always two twelve. <laughs> always two twelve. I love you, man. I know you compete in the open. You're two twelve guy. Oh, I use it all the time. <laughs> but you're repping it, dude. You're you're repping it, and you're letting us know, like, hey, it's possible. <clears throat> you know, waiting for more of you guys to come up. Shit, I'm 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 gonna be there soon. I'll tell you that. Ain't much, ain't, much, ain't much I could do at 212 if I'm not winning. So, you know, hey, you know, we'll take it there. But we got some business to handle here first. Yeah. And we'll yeah. see what happens in we'll see what happens in October. Maybe those haters are right. Maybe Kareth, you gotta increase your calories a little bit, eh? <laughs> <laughs> and eat some raw meat. Yeah. So, <laughs> nah, I ain't eating no raw meat. There's a sushi. Sushi, that's about it. That's what I'm saying. There you go. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah listen, 
That that's about it. I ain't no damn squirrels or pigeons and <laughs> nah. We ain't doing that. <laughs> listen, no. listen. I'm a humble man. My mama will whoop my ass. I, I'm out here eating raw squirrels, man. <laughs> like boy, what you thinking? <laughs> People just always insane. have to go to the extreme too. Like, why can't they just have like a medium rare? Like, that's just like right in the middle. It's perfect. It's like people either have to be like, no, it has to be raw, or it has what, to like be a medium, extreme. medium rare, medium rare squirrel. Not squirrel, <laughs> but you know, almost anything else. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe not medium rare. <laughs> <laughs> Think, thanks about just, it. Just beef, you know. <laughs> Oh, that's too. Good. Yeah, no, I, 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 I digress, Kenzen. I did see the comparison, and just to make lighthearted of the situation, um, I listen, Tonio, um, uh, <clears throat> I beat you at that Olympia, or I placed higher. I'm just saying. Oh, that boy, crazy! <laughs> <laughs> I did get him. I did get him. I did get him. Hey. Look, as far hey, as I'm hey, concerned. Hey, no, no, that's a cha- that's that's a challenge. New York is coming. We got to see it. We got to see it. You know I'm what? Say, this is New Year. <laughs> I, I would I would love I would I'd be honored if they gave me the opportunity to stand next to the open winner, um, whoever it may be. Tonio, you better repeat, man. I got my money on you. So just oh yeah, most better, better. <laughs> double down on that shit. So we could see what they were talking about last year, and that would be fun. And shit. I'm going on to Bev's next week. I'll ask Steve if we can't make that happen. I think it would be great for the sport, and it would be good for the audience. But whether or not they choose to do it, totally up to them. They should do if that. They, it, the internet would explode if they did that. It would be it would be huge. I can tell you right now, the audience would just, like, everybody would flip, man. It, I, I'm flipping just thinking about it, you know? <laughs> it, it's got to be done now. Now it's got to be done. well. Shit, you you get the internet talking, and hopefully people listen. Right, right, right. That's where it starts at. Yeah, that's fa- that's fair to say. That's fair to say. Yeah, it'll be it'll well, be fun. But I know Tony is going to be at his best, hands down. I know I'm be at my best, hands down. But there's still a strong lineup going into New York. There's a huge lineup going into New York. And Nick and uh, Tonio, they're creating a hell of a buzz. People want to see that, man. I want to see it. As a fan of the sport, I want to see that. But who who else do we got going into New York? Is Nick Zilla going to do it? I heard he was. No? Did he get I his visa? Jumping in. I heard Carlos was going to jump in, too. Yeah, Carlos. I spoke to Carlos. I, I might. Well, you already said it, so it's on you. <laughs> Carlos said he's doing New York. <laughs> it's already been videos that's been saying it. <laughs> yeah, okay. he put it. He put it out there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of guys prepping for it. They just aren't saying it yet. Yeah. Is what about Ramon? Is he going to shut it down after uh, the Arnold? Because I was expecting him. Like I'm, I'm sure he's going to do it. I was thinking a guy like Akeem, who technically still has to qualify would do a show like New York because it makes sense. It's it's you know logistically right perfect. Yeah. yeah, right there. Yeah, you know, even um, Horse MD, he needs a qualifier, right? Yeah, he's out here right now. Yeah, but I mean, like, if he doesn't win at the Arnold Brazil, he's not doing a show to do. He's not. He's oh, not he's even not. doing it. No, nah, so wow. like, he said he got feedback, and whatever his feedback was, he said he needs to take time. I told wow, him like, really? keep going. yeah, yeah, I would keep going if I was him personally, but you know, I think he looks great. That's what all he's got to do is all he's got to do is refine that, and there's a show for him. Yeah, we did see that refinement out of him at Romania. He nailed it. He nailed it standing next to Samson and Beirut, and and compared with them, except from the back. That's where he really has to do his work, right? But he yeah. did, man. The conditioning was fantastic. He he compared with them very very well. So, but. He, him and Milos will have a plan however long he's going to shut it down for. He's still a young guy. He's still got a lot of potential. He's still got a lot of growing to do. So I'm sure that they probably have a plan for later in the year would be my guess because he's ready. In the right show, he could win, you know? Right. What about, a, what about a guy like uh, Sergio? Sergio? Sergio's won that show before. He, he would probably love to compete in New York. I don't know if he's on the roster or if that show is on his radar, but... You know, I think he's he's a perfect competitor for that one. He's still down there training with Dorian Yates in Spain. Yeah, I think he's getting ready to do something overseas. Okay. Yeah. All right. 
Well, beef, beef uh, uh, Stuart Sutherland. He's he's going to be in. Right? Yeah, Stu's yeah. another one. Yeah, yeah. Stu's Stu, Stu, Stu's looking ready. Okay, wait, wait, Quint, 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 Quinton's doing it. Yeah, Quinton's doing it. Quint Beast one. Yeah, he's got a big for boy. It. Yeah. Oh shit. Yeah. Nice. Nice. So he's a monster. <laughs> yeah. But again, I think I think with a lot of these guys, because they, they took a year off, they might not be announcing what show they're doing just yet. Mm. You know, you you know, because I spoke with him. He said that's what he's prepping for. But obviously, if he's not announcing it, then it's not a hundred percent sure. But I think a lot of guys yeah. are like that. You know, it's like you're you're getting ready for something around that time, but you don't want to say hundred percent for sure just in case. Different different mentality, obviously, but you know, right, right, right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Still, it'd not, be a good show for him. any show he goes in. That would oh, make man. that would make New York hands down probably the biggest show of the year. It would take up a lot. Yeah, it really yeah, would. It would take up a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it would. It would. He but that's is, the thing, like, though. I think the more people that jump into New York, you know, you have some people who you know they'll tuck their toe. They don't want to go into mm, the lineup. Good point. One hundred percent. Yep. 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 Shots fired. Who are you talking oh, about? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who, who's you talking about, Robin? I'm just saying, like, anybody who's, who's uh, been telling me. There's a lot of guys like, like that, you know? <laughs> yeah, they're surprised that I didn't jump out. I'm like, oh, that's because you're telling me you would drop out, you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, it's yeah. Crazy. No, but why they're, would you jump out? That, they're hoping that you'll, Never. Jump, you'll jump out. You yeah, know? you won the show. <laughs> 100%, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Nick Nall won his head. <laughs> <laughs> I told him I'm gonna put it on my wall. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> Shot oh, yeah. fire. Big yeah. game, honey. <laughs> yeah. No, that's gonna yeah. be an entertaining battle. Like I, I gotta say it like it is, bro. Steve's gonna work you guys. <laughs> oh yeah, hell yeah. Or not even Steve. Not even it's Steve. Because Steve's not even gonna be judging. Tyler's gonna work you guys, yeah, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's Tyler gonna be a hell really of a show. Tyler's been putting guys through the paces like this last yeah. the, the last season, second half of last season and, and right in this year. He's been putting guys through the paces, man. Like you're doing minimum two rounds, if not three. I'm I, I, I'm surprised if you don't see three rounds these days. I think that's the way it should always be. Yeah, yeah I mean, it also 100%. How many people they bring out? So if they bring back out top three, you're doing three rounds for sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, and yeah. if it's two people, you're going to do those two rounds. They're just going to keep switching you. Yeah. It's the way it should be, man. It is. It, it can't it, wait. It really, May 18th. <laughs> it's not. It really, like, it's, like relatively, forever. it's not even that far off. And the New York Pro has always been one of my favorite shows, man. It's just, it's always so well run. You know, a lot of the pros that I talk to that have pictures from the New York, New York Pro and they compete in New York Pro, those are, like, their favorite pictures because they always have, like, amazing lighting amazing stage photos and it's just the background it's iconic you know like just you can picture it in your head what it's going to look like the new york pro background and uh it's always been one of my favorites ever since it was the the night of champions so yeah you know man it's, so it's, it's iconic so second second in new york what do you guys anticipate as being the second biggest show of the year Hmm. second biggest show of the year like for for aside from what we already saw with the arnold like excluding yeah. the arnold and the olympia yeah, yeah we're, okay. we're, we're we're past that we're talking about what's coming next. maybe the dubai show because there's a big dubai. Game, you know no. yeah that's a good question though you know what's gonna what about detroit? Yeah. i feel like dubai is trying to take that spot yeah detroit detroit's another one i'm seeing a lot of big names talking about detroit yeah. right now yep. oh yeah yep. yeah yeah good veto to detroit too what's that well, I, the, yeah, d d uh, good Vito's doing Detroit. Uh, Justin Rodriguez is doing Detroit. Um, Martin right. Fitzwater, he's, he's that's another name. In. Yep is Ju yep. is Justin doing New York as well? No, no, he's doing no. Uh, oh, wow. he's doing Detroit because I wanted to do Detroit too because uh, Fool had they had told me since I'm doing this one or anyone who does this one they're gonna pretty much pay for their trip to come to the show. Yeah. So I was like, shit, why not? And uh, because Justin's doing it, he was like, yeah, I'd rather not have two of my guys battle it out right now. So, which is cool. Um, I told him that 20k looks pretty though, but it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought I thought it was 30. Did it did it I, it was, I don't know. I thought it was 30 because of what uh Mitt 45 contributed. Didn't it go oh, up? Man, probably, yeah. Probably. Uh, 
Let me see. I'll I double check it here. Yeah, Fuad had announced that it was going to be a bigger purse, and then Mitt 45 came in. Tyler made the announcement that all shows are getting more money for the Open. Right. That's I think right. that's why that's more right. people are jumping in there, too. Yeah. Yeah. But like what as Robin fit- was saying, I'm sorry. No, no. As well, just uh, I, I checked their page. As of February twentieth, it said twenty five k. So I uh, think Tyler may have made that announcement um, even after that. So it might actually it might be that thirty now. Oh wow! Yeah, it's yeah. pretty. It's big, man. It's big. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, that's, that's definitely substantial. You know, because you would have had to win two and a half shows to get that last year, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's now, true. Dubai, Dubai. What surprise money for the Open? Like a hundred k. What? Hundred, yeah, it's a hundred k. Wow, Robin, yeah. Robin, I'm gonna st- I'm gonna start eating now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Give me the squirrel. best squirrel you can eat. <laughs> when is, when is that show? Maybe I'm gonna change my plans. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I'm not too I'll close. Mean, I can huge. still twitch it up. You know, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I think that's Texas is gonna though. be a big one too. Texas will be a big show. Yep, love that show. Texas yep. is so well done, uh, dude. Bad Luck Productions, Freddie and Sheila. It, it it was run like a mini Olympia, the way that it was so laid out. I don't know if you guys ever got to experience that one. Just as, as a fan of the sport, I would love to sit in the crowd and just watch that show. Yeah, they're making it like an entire uh, sports weekend um, was the announcement that they did last year. And they upped it to 20,000 even before any of this new stuff came down the pipe. So I wouldn't be surprised if that one was 30,000 for the winner. For sure. For sure. Oh, yeah. No. And with, they, with, some, uh, with, it up. with somebody like Sarah Villegas around in Texas, you never know. She she might just throw some more money in there. That's what she does <laughs> for the uh for the I'm sorry, uh woman's physique. Yep. Yep. Yes. Yeah. So whatever they win, I think she doubles it. And then there's a best poser award that she issues, if I'm not mistaken. Oh wow. Shit. Yeah, that's awesome. Very yeah. good. That's for, what for, for for women. For women, relax, guys. You're not getting out of that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I hope her pose though. <laughs> <laughs> Boys gonna we, we need more people like that that are giving back to the sport like that. You know, hundred percent, dude. Like, I, dude, I have so much respect for her and her husband. Like, they they are just good ambassadors for the sport. And like you said, Robin, just more of that. We need the legends to come back. Just like they do in basketball, you know, you still see, like, God rest them, but Bill Russell was always around basketball. You know, Julius Irving, always around basketball. We need more of that in bodybuilding. Like, the legends need to be on podcasts, like you see with Milos and Dennis James. They need to really be out there at at the forefront and, you know, setting the tone for us. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's funny. A lot of... um. <laughs> There's a lot of YouTube channels that don't even like to do interviews and podcasts with athletes because it uh, there's this belief that it takes away from the views of your of your regular videos. You know, the interviews seem to be a little bit less when it comes to the actual views compared to these news videos that you can pump out, right? And I don't know what it is about that in particular, but I've never really subscribed to that. I, I've seen guys say, I'm not doing interviews anymore because I don't get the views. I was like, maybe you're just not consistently doing it enough in order to build that audience for where your channel is actually seeing these things. And as far as I'm concerned, why not go straight to the source like you guys here to get the info instead of as much as I love to put my opinion out there and be able to feature you guys. You should be able to have a balance of both as far as I'm concerned. And that's more of a truer representation of you guys as the athletes as well, right? even beyond just the legends that are putting the info out there. It's great that Jay Cutler's doing his podcast and Milos jumps on there and Dennis James, but I love all those podcasts. They're fantastic, right? But it really does come down to, I really enjoy being able to feature you guys to be able to put it directly to the audience out there. And Robin, you do it with Canadian beef too, right? I mean, it's, it's coming directly from you guys. And that's part of why I enjoyed watching it to begin with, right? Yeah. That's what it should be. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing about that is, you know, if you're doing longer interviews, like, for example, Tonio, like when you won New York Pro, I guarantee you everybody's searching up all Tonio Burton, watching your interviews and all that. 
you know, right now, you know, if we're in the off season or whatever, maybe you're not as relevant, right? So they might not be searching you in that moment. But that's why you're still putting out that stuff all year long anyways. Because when when you're in the hot spot, then people are looking for you and all that content's there already. So then the views right. can go up. But if you're not putting out that content <clears throat> consistently, there's like one or two videos. Oh, Muscle and Fitness has a video with Tonio. That's the only one I can watch. Then how are they supposed to really get to know you and like, you know, really get into your content? I think that's how you can, even though it might be spread over more time, more episodes, things like that. Those people are more invested into you. They're watching your hour long interviews. Like those are going to be like your clients, you, you know, everything. It, it's going to be those, those people are going to be your main fan base. You know, everybody right. else might come and go. That's your core. That's the way I see it. Now, I'll say this, Kenzen, your, your podcast is unique in the sense that you do go out and you talk to current athletes, whereas you know, a lot of a lot of people they'll talk to people you know um, from yesteryear that can contribute to the sport, but they can't speak about what's going on now um, the same way that Robin or Tony could, you know. So you bring a different element to it, and I got to say that if anybody feels as if their views are sacrificed by doing interviews, well, maybe you need to step your interview game up. You know, um, I think you do a great job of involving everyone. You know, you have a, a pretty diversified portfolio of athletes, current or post. And um, that's just not, it's not like other podcasts that are out there, you know? So whether or not they want to do interviews, that's up to them. You keep doing what you're doing because what you're doing is working. Right. Yep. I, I, I and, hear you. And, and it keeps it real. And, and oh. As as, as as speaking speaking for the athletes, we athletes love you, bro. <laughs> I'm not yeah. just saying that. <laughs> oh yeah, like, I mean, in all your videos too, like when you you know you do the athlete spot uh, spotlights, you know you keep it real. You're not like I hate to put it this way, you're not dick right athletes. You know what I mean? You you talk about how good this athlete is, you talk about how good this one is, but it could be a little mix up here and there. You know what I mean? That's where these other ones, it's like they have their favorites, and you know they have their favorites. And they have who they don't like, and you know who they don't like. So, I mean, you're very, like I said, like he's saying, very real, straightforward, and that's why I like it. And yeah. I always share it all the time, so. It's it's not a common thing to have a, a lot of diversity within my cha a, a lot of YouTube channels out there in that sense, where this podcast, like, I don't really have a, uh, like, I don't have a separate podcast for pros that are on, or the guys that I you do uh, YouTube commentary with, right? It's all the one for me. It's the bodybuilding breakdown podcast because all of it is exactly what it sounds like. It's the bodybuilding breakdown, whether it be the opinions from you guys or the info from you guys, or whether I'm dealing with, you know, Max Max Muscle or Sancho over at Bodybuilding News or, uh, you know, Matt over at Muscle. Anybody, you know, I don't have those defining lines because I don't think that bodybuilding should be niche down so far in that sense right i will say i i do keep things to really open to 12 classic and that's where i live i will say that because those are the ones that i'm really interested in right i have respect for all the other divisions don't get me wrong absolutely i do and especially like uh, like hart mcgrath's channel that really got me into watching some men's physique stuff right it's not something i'm going to cover on a regular basis but i've got respect for it but the the big thing is you're, you're right. You really have to have that diversity as far as I'm concerned, because one, it makes for an interesting channel. And two, myself as a bodybuilding fan, it gives me what I wanted to get out of even starting this channel to begin with. This is part of what I started it for, you know? So I'm getting everything I want out of it. You guys are able to come on here and, and put it directly to the fans. It's a win-win. Yeah, I'll keep it real with you, too, man. Guys like you that are willing to go the extra mile and get athletes like us to, you know, get together and chop it up. Like, dude, like, it's just awesome. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, because where else are we going to get to do this? Like, for guys like me that don't necessarily talk a lot on camera, you give you give the people that follow me a chance to kind of know me outside of my pictures. You know, so thank you for that and providing that platform. You know, I, I have a lot of people that come up to me and say, hey, I saw you on EP, EP09 podcast. And I'm like, really? You know, they're like, yeah, I didn't know about you until him. Now I'm a fan. 
So, you know, thank you for putting me out there and putting other athletes out there. And it's good for the culture, bro. Right. Oh, no, it, it it is. I, I appreciate it, man. I, I really do. This is uh, this is why I started doing it. You know, this is this is stuff that I just do in my 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 free time, you know, when I'm not. Ugh, fuck right now, it's crazy the shit that I got to do just on a day to day. Right. For work, it's nuts. Right. But this still it it dude. The fucking shit that I've had to deal with lately is insanity, insanity, bro. Yeah. But this, this, this is important to me, you know, and that's what it comes down to. It's, it's, it's no different than anything else, right? If it's really that important to you, you find the time to do it you, and, and reaching out to guys like you, this is, this is what I want to do. That's it. You know, it's, it's easy for me. It's great that you're getting good feedback on the show though. That's, that's really good. I mean, it helps me stay motivated to keep doing it too. Right. So it, it's, it's great that way. Mm-hmm. it's fun yeah. too you know what i mean like because we all stay in our bubble so much you know we're in different places in the earth you know we don't get to see each other maybe you know i see you guys like once a year you know when we're at the same show but otherwise we're just doing our own thing so it's nice to be able to connect catch up shoot the shit you know learn from each other positive vibes all that stuff it's really really awesome i love doing podcasts man yeah D- dude when i put this one out there people saw the lineup and they were like shit we didn't expect all these guys to be in the same room and i was like i know right <laughs> this is just it this is this is why it's going to be awesome because nobody else is doing shit like this right yeah right when you when you proposed it to me i i didn't even have the time i was like yo i'm gonna be there <laughs> just sign me up yep. <laughs> where do i sign up where do i sign up because i knew it was going to be good dialogue man and um these two guys you you guys are all good guys so you know and we share the same passion you know we all love bodybuilding so I knew it was going to be organic and just a good time. So whoever watches this, you know, you're welcome. Thank the man who <laughs> brought us all together. <laughs> Thank the man that brought us together. Oh yeah, it's all good on my end, man. Well, you know, I I got some questions too from uh, from from some people. You guys want to do a couple questions? Yeah, of course. Yeah, there's there's some good ones. All right, here. Let's uh, let's see here. Okay, here's here's a good one. Um, Kareth, if you could go back in time and stand next to one bodybuilder on stage, who would it be? Whoever is greatest at that time. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever time it is, whoever is greatest at that time. Like, listen, I know I'm not the biggest fish in the pond, but I think I bring a different element that can cancel out a lot of factors that other perceive as strengths. Um, so... You know, listen, I, I, I know people are going to give me shit for this because it, it's so loaded, Kenzen. You know, like, I almost don't want to answer it. But the truth is, if I could stand next to, uh, like, the Golden Era guys, you know, any one of them. Because um, if I if I say one name, I'm going to get shit from here to the end of time. You know, they're going, oh, he thought he could beat this guy. I never said that. I just, I just want to stand next no, to him no, and no. see where I compare that's but, it. That's all the yeah. question is. It's just who do you not who you can beat? Who would you like to stand next to? If that's I could it. be in a lineup, like if I give you a a, a top five lineup with myself included in it, so yeah, four just, guys, just, just one, just one guy. Like if you one if guy? you want to if yeah if you ever thought that you like who could you stand next to in the entirety of bodybuilding history that you would enjoy? Not necessarily that you could beat, but who would you enjoy standing next to and being compared to? All right. As long I will answer this question as long as you put down at the bottom. This is an opinion <laughs> formed by Terrence. <laughs> this is not to be taken seriously in any way. <laughs> I would love to stand next to Flex Wheeler, bro. Like, come on. I would love to stand next to yeah. Flex Wheeler. I would love to stand next to fucking Flex Lewis. I want to see where I line up with the guys that I consider to be the best. So, you know, as a bodybuilder, as a guy who doesn't back down from anybody, regardless of division, I would love to stand next to any of the greats with all due respect. I would love to stand next to a Sean Ray. I would love to stand next to a Melvin Anthony. I would love to stand next to a fucking Milos, you know, um, just to see what, what it looks like, you know, and not, not the side by side picture comparisons because it's never the scale. The lighting's always different, you know, and the timing is always off. So, you know, you never know. You can't do picture versus picture. If I'm going to stand next to any bodybuilder, it would be somebody from the golden era. 
But you, you, you've earned your right to be able to pick whoever you want at this point, man. You know, you've got your accolades. I don't think that you should feel any way about that. You, 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 you've earned the right to consider you, yourself sir. right up there with anybody, as far as I'm concerned. Right. Thank you, sir. People always you know, have shit sure. to say about that, though. They'll be like, "No, he didn't." I'm gonna tell you why. <laughs> hey, come on, sir. <laughs> be like, he, he won't eat. He won't eat raw squirrels. Can't stand next to him. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you got way, you, know, you got way too many people coming at you, dude. I'm telling bro, you, like I'm you don't deserve you, man, this you, shit. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna send you the link. I'm gonna send all you guys the link to this bullshit because it's right, so frustrating. Send it to me. <laughs> all right, T- Tonio, who would you stand next to? Oh man, uh, Dexter. Of course, you know that's why I'm always compared yeah. to. So I think it'd be dope to you know, or even Kai too, because um, you know I hear the yeah. back is starting to you know hang that way. So I think that would be dope. You know, also Phil. So I mean, I don't know. Like, yeah, that that would be my who I'd like to stand next to and see what uh how I stack next to them. For sure, Dexter. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Good picks, man. Good pick, Robin. Yeah, what about I got you? to stand next to Melvin. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, <laughs> Robin. Who would you stand next to? Uh, Nick Walker. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah, you got you guys probably are about the same size, dude. Seriously. Well, we got you know it's funny because we got to stand on the same stage when he came up here to do the Pure Muscle show. That the we guest had a, posing. We had a couple of guys guest posing, so there's a video, and that was the first. That's why I want to pose again with Nick Walker because we were in guest posing shape, but I'd like to stand next to Nick Walker in you know real contest shape. Contest. Yeah, yeah. So, Fun fact. Yeah, a lot of that's what. That's where I that's where I even found out about you, dude. That was the first encounter that I had with you on my channel. Was that guest posing? Oh, that's funny. I was like, who the fuck is this guy? He's fucking massive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's where it came from. Those yeah. are good ones, man. That you could cool. stand next to Nick this year. Yeah. That's you should the do goal. New York. Yeah, that's the goal. You should you, you should do New York. I'm considering it, but you know, that's the thing. If I'm ready, I'll I'll be there, right? Yeah. But you know. Yeah. Right now, my tail's tucked. <laughs> nah, don't do that. No, no, never, never. Don't do that. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, no, you put the size on to put stand next to anybody out there, dude. Like, yeah. hands down. Robin's a big boy, man. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah. I love New York. Like I said, I already said that. So, you know, if I can be ready, I'll be there. Yeah. Yeah. I love uh, it. Okay. Yeah, I, I, Robin, okay. I'll see you uh, in May. 100%. <laughs> <laughs> Get ready. Yeah, have to make Get ready. Speed things up a little bit. Increase that cardio tomorrow. Here we go. <laughs> That's it. You got it. Yeah. All right. Uh, here does uh, uh, got another question. Does Antonio think his tattoos affect negatively or positively how his physique appears on stage and thus his placings? Obviously not. No. He already wins shows. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. I mean, what I won uh, Indie Pro in two twelve, top ten, two twelve Olympia. I went Legion Sports Fest, um, Olympia. I sucked. I got, you know, I actually got sick that week. But uh, anyway, um, New York, yeah. I went, and then you know, eight at Olympia. So tattoos don't mean shit. I think if you're lean, you're lean. You know, there tattoos you go. ain't gonna, yeah, tattoos are skin deep. You know, it ain't gonna fucking make you look fat or watery. Yeah. But yeah. luckily, luckily for you, because you know, as as somebody else who's dark skin with tattoos. When you have the posing lotion on, it, it really hides a lot. Like you don't really pay attention to that. You know, mm-hmm. you, you start to see you start to see the crevices, and it, it, in some ways, the tattoos are non-existent at that point. Right. No, that's just okay. that's just the truth of the matter. You know, having dark skin. I see it. I see it. Yeah. Okay. Fucking dogs. I was like, yeah, I hear it all. She's a sook. Oh, man. Look, look, look. She is, man. She's a sook. <laughs> that's funny good girl all right um here uh, tonio another one for you who do you see as a bigger threat to your olympia placing nick walker or Raphael brando nick you think um, nick's more of a I threat than Raphael? nick brings a different type of conditioning and a hardness to his muscle you know um <clears throat> seeing nick in person you know he has that grainy you know granny look um and that's you know, blessed when it comes to bodybuilding and also the density he has. And me and Brandel, like, we're similar in our physique uh, with aesthetics. Um, I'm going off pictures. He doesn't bring the conditioning that 
Nick brings, like, not even a little bit. And uh, I think, I mean, this show coming around, my conditioning, I mean, Olympia conditioning was is better than what I've seen him bring so far. So I can't tell you what he's bringing now. Um, I see him work out, uh, but I'm catching the end of his workouts, and he's uh, covered up for the most part. So, I mean, now I just, I think Nick is, you know, bigger name. He's done more. He carries more weight. Um, uh, he's a bigger influence. Now, who's yeah. taller, you or you or Hoffa? Nah, Brendan's taller. Yeah, he's, what, he's probably like. Uh, he's probably an easy 5'10". Yeah, he's around my height. Yeah, yeah he's around. My I didn't height. think he was that tall. I didn't think he was that tall. Yeah, nah, yeah. he uh, because I met him and we, because I thought at first from a distance I'm like, oh, we're the same height, and then when I got close, I'm like, okay, he grew a little bit. <laughs> 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 but uh, no, nah, because uh, I seen a page posted and they said I was five six, like five five or five six, and had him at like. Damn near six foot, and I'm like, that's definitely not the fucking yeah. height. You know <laughs> <No>. what I mean? Because <laughs> what Nick is five eight, and me and him look at each other, you know, eye to eye. So, yeah. Well, I don't know. I, I think it would be a great matchup, regardless, because you guys are both more on the aesthetic mass monster side, right? You know, I I think it would be personally, I would want to see you compete against Rafa. Mm-hmm. I'm you know, definitely I, looking forward to it. Cool training in his gym with him, you know what I mean? So we're yeah. around each other already. So it, I think that's just going to make a better, you know, rivalry on stage as well. And um, I don't know if you guys seen it, but I posted my back shots. And then he went and posted his back shots. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I was like, okay. So, you know, I got I just hit chest and shoulders today. So here in a little bit, I'll put up uh, some of my chest uh, shots too. So, you know, I like, uh, you know. Uh, all the smoke is wanted, you know. <laughs> hey, listen, yeah. you got to shoot the shot while you can, man. You know. Oh yeah. You know, listen, you you don't post after the show. You know, nah. nobody want to see that. Nobody want to see that. That happened. You know, so <laughs> post going into the yeah. show, man. Let the people see what they want to see. All uh, right, right. After this show, I'll be talking Mr. Robin too about New York. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's yeah, safe, bro. Nobody's safe. <laughs> We want everybody <laughs> to show up and Man. be ready. <laughs> I don't know. I I don't know, Kareth. The the rebound pictures are pretty are pretty badass, man. Like I do enjoy the rebound pictures. A Antoine uh, Viant he posted up his rebound pictures after the UK, and it's like, dude, it, it it's really really impressive. So I I don't know, man. They're, well, the rebound picture the rebound pictures are cool, but I'm saying nobody wants to see pre show pictures after the show. Right, right. When I look too, you get you get what I'm saying. So <laughs> let them let them fly. If you took them, let them fly. Don't hold them in because I, you know, like it's cool to reminisce, but you want people to be in the moment with you. I'm on this right. journey. Come on, you know. Yeah, that, that's a good point, man. Because you know you're not going to look this good forever either. You know, Talk so what are you, what are you hiding for? You're looking your best you've ever looked. What do you Talk got about it? For, right. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. right. I mean, yeah. meanwhile, you're 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 in the gym. Chances are. You know, you saw a mirror and you're going to take off that hoodie. Now you're working out in the tank top. It's already out there, you know? I know. It's oh, already yeah. out there. It, it's funny because you know you look good, but then when you look back on it like a month or two later, you're like, okay, now I really see how good I look. You don't yeah. see it at the moment, but <laughs> you, you know you look good. You just don't know you look that good. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I get it, it's funny. Ramon Dino, he posted up his pictures from the pros gym, but um, just at uh, just before he did the um, before he did the uh, uh, the Ohio show, he didn't do the UK. That's one thing that I always do find interesting where guys kind of miss on stage, but then they're like, I was uh, I was ready like 48 hours out. This is what I look like 24 hours out. This is what I look like. It's like, yeah, yeah. but dude, you didn't bring it to the stage. So, yeah. what Never happened? Been. You should have carried that momentum into the show, you know, instead yeah. of trying to, was, you know, be secret squirrel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right, I was right. on, man. Look, look, look at me now. I was on. I was on, dude. You missed. Too little. And he did. He missed hard, man. He oh, did. Yeah. You see, you see that shit every so often too. Yeah. All right. Uh, but he still okay, looked great. Yeah. I thought he brought a fantastic look. Oh, you he know, didn't bring just, a bad just, look. He just didn't bring his what? best look. No, you know what the problem was. 
like Wesley showed up, bro. <laughs> like, yeah, he's that guy right now. Yeah, yeah. Wesley oh, just, yeah. yeah, Wesley just wanted it more that time. Yeah, more, you know. Yeah, you you saw it. You saw it on stage, like his whole yeah. pre- presentation. Like yeah. he was in the moment, dude. He was he went hard. Yeah, he worked it. Yeah, yeah. It, everything was polished. That that's the word I'm gonna use for him. He was very polished. One hundred percent. Yep, he was, and he's got tons of time to get better between now and the Olympia, and he will be better. Every 100%. time he's gotten feedback from the judges, he takes it and he. Makes the improvements, but he also continues to represent what he considers that golden era physique while still being able to work with the judges of today. And that is what really sets him apart to be in the league of his own. Yeah. Now, Arnold, Arnold said something on stage, and I got to touch on this, right? Oh, yeah. He said, he said Wesley reminded him of Lou Ferrigno. I'm like, bro. <laughs> I'm like, this dude looks exactly like you. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> he wasn't gonna put that. I know, right? I know. I was, I'm, I'm I was sorry, shocked I too, man. I, no, I thought he I was going there. I was shocked. Everybody was shocked. Like, right? I, I, Arnold was trolling him, man. He was trolling him. Yeah, I, I don't know. He had to be because I was like, dude, this dude is like the splitting image of you at that age. <laughs> he was Just trolling. Saying. Him. Yeah, he was. Hands down he was. He is he he is Arnold reincarnated. Um <laughs> even though Arnold's still alive, that doesn't work. Anyway, um <laughs> okay. Um one of the one of the big fans of the channel, Billy the Cheesemonger. You guys have all touched like Tony and Kareth, you touched on this when I had you on the uh my show after the uh, Olympia, but like question is what's it like backstage at the Olympia? Are you guys talking or locked in and focused? What's it like backstage in that sense? Uh, it depends. Um, like, as everyone's getting ready, other classes are going on stage. I know with us, because um, we're not back there when 212 is back there, but uh, we're sleeping. <laughs> you know, <laughs> everyone is sleeping, so it's time to, you know, they hey, time to get tan or glazed or whatever. And then once they say that, now we're pumping up. And as we're getting glazed, we're pumping up. And then <clears throat> you might see someone like a uh, hottie's very... Uh, he'll come up to you backstage and he'll help you pump up. And it's crazy because I'm like, this. all he's doing is saying, you know, I'm going to help you because I ain't got nothing to worry about. You need all the help you can get going up against me, bro. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah no, it's really just uh, everyone starts, everyone is sleeping. It looks like uh, someone said it looks like a, a, a lion's den. And everyone just sleep, just resting, you know, right. and uh, wake up and get your honey and your rice cakes in, your sodium, and you're pumping up, and then you just go on stage. But no one's, like, talking and laughing or anything like that. It's a serious, you know, it's time to lock in. Yeah, yeah. Kareth, you find the same thing? Uh, Yeah, with the exception of, um, you know, I, there are a lot of guys that help each other pump up. But for the most part, um. I'd say that there is a social aspect among athletes. You know, we talk to each other, but, you know, it's like brief interactions. And then it's like, bam, back to work. Okay. All right. You know, we had our little session where we chopped it up back to work. You know, um, we can be friends later. <laughs> you know what I mean? We don't have too many hotties in 212. Like, you know, like Keon and stuff, we'll joke, we'll, you know, chop it up. And then he's probably going to go lay down. I'm probably going to lay down. But for the most part, it's get your feet up chill wait till they call you you know wait till they call you a second time and you got probably like three or four more times before they call you before you start <laughs> taking it serious before they come clean by your ear <laughs> right <laughs> right you want to drag it out as much because bodybuilding is a game of hurry up and wait and so you you really gotta you gotta make sure you're off your feet as long as you possibly can right so there there is there is that i'm gonna be over here in this corner just chilling until it's time but for the most part, there's there's no like anger towards each other. It's just it's good energy, and everybody's just trying to find that right competitive space. Right, right. Okay, okay. Now it seems like everybody's got to keep the focus mainly on themselves. Would be my assumption, right? So, of course, man, sense. money's on the line. You know, everybody wants to go <laughs> home with that big ass check. <laughs> right. Know? That is reputation. You know? Yeah, you know. 
but mostly the Chiefs. Especially this year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, you know, especially so, this year, man. All the shows, there's money. Like, there's there's decent money on the line now, right? Like, you can actually walk away with a couple of bucks in your pocket. Yeah. Right. You know, it, it's it's good because it, it, it validates your work. It validates your work. And I know not just myself, every one of those guys back there suffered at some point throughout their 16 week prep, or if it's longer than that, they were suffering. So everybody wants that, that validation. They want that check and they want their moment in that, that dead center. And, you know, I I would love for everybody to get it, but you know, like everybody can't go. (laughs) Sometimes it's like, (laughs) right, right, right. (laughs) You know, yeah, that's right. That's right. But well, it's going to change the game this year, right? Like it's it's going to change the game. You're going to you're going to see more people wanting to go and compete more regularly and you're going to see people showing up and it's like now there's money on the line and that changes everything. That changes everything, man. It's 100%. Just I, I I like it because the money as much as it shouldn't be a motivator, we need it to be because our sport is risky and we put a lot on the line. There's a lot as far as time goes, a lot of sacrifice that you put into this to be your best, you know, so having that, that carrot is going to have a lot of the guys that earn their pro card to really say, Hey, I still want to pursue this. You know, I don't just want to win a pro card and say, Hey, I'm a pro, you know, I I can expand my portfolio because I'm a pro now. No, there's an opportunity that you could do four shows and possibly win a hundred thousand dollars for the year, you know? That's that's a nice little bonus at the end of the year. So if you're dangling that carrot in front of a new pro, that gives them incentive to really work for something. Yeah, man, hundred percent. Money talks. There's no question. Yeah. It's 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 going to be a motivator. It'll always be a motivator. And this is just like I said. This is probably just the start. It's twenty grand this year. I think you're going to see these things consistently bump up, right? They throw a bit of money at it now. It's going to generate more interest for the sport. You're going to end up with more sponsors. We're already seeing it happen. You know, um, yeah. I think it was Wolfpack that just came out as another official sponsor, and they injected another, oh, yeah. I don't know, the 130K, yeah. I think it was, right? So the prize money's bumping. It's it's going to continue. It, it's going to continue. Yeah. Shout outs to them because, listen, everybody loves bodybuilding, dude. And you look at Instagram. You look at any any social media platform. What what motivates it more than anything? Fitness and cats. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's fitness and cats. That's all it is, dude. You know, it's girls in booty shorts, guys with their shirts off, flexing. Like, bodybuilding is responsible for so much of social media success. Nobody wants to talk about that. But I'm going to go ahead and say it because that's true. Right. Yeah. Yep. 100%, yeah. man. 100%. We are the prototype. Uh, okay. Uh, I got another one. If, uh, if any of you guys could go back and start your career over again, what would you do differently? We'll have to start a new podcast right now for that, for that one question. (laughs) (laughs) It's like a three hour answer. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. 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 Like every summer, you just, you just learn so much as you go, man. Like, I don't know. Yeah. I could summarize it real quick. I would start earlier. I would listen. I'd listen to the people who supported me and I would have started bodybuilding at 18. I wouldn't have waited 14 years to start. Yeah. True. True. Yeah. So I started around what? 28, 20. Yeah. 20, 26, 28 is when I started. Cause yeah. Yeah. yeah well, I've been at it for what? Five years. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I started when I was 16. I don't, I don't think starting any earlier, I don't think that really gives you a head start necessarily. I think it's just, just the path you're on the journey that, you know what I mean? Like some is some journeys are longer than others, you know? So maybe by starting earlier, it ends earlier. I don't know. Right. But you know, you're on the right path. That's so it's one of those things where it's like, would you really change anything? Cause otherwise you would not be in the same situation you are right now. So would would you really go back and, you know, even though you made mistakes and all that kind of stuff, would you really change anything? I don't know. Like, that's a, actually a pretty serious answer. Like, I probably, I'm sure there's a lot of things, like I said, that I could think of that I would change if I could go back. Um, but I'm happy where I am now. So, like, would I really do that? I don't know. I 100% would go back. Deep question. It's a deep <laughs> question for, for late night podcasts, you know. 
But you, you yeah. know what? The, the, the answer is, the, the, honestly, the answer is you probably wouldn't. You know, if you really learned from your experiences, you probably wouldn't go back and change shit. I, I, from a business perspective, I can certainly tell you from the nine years that I've been running this commercial diving company, I have gained a myriad of experience in really a relatively short amount of time. And I don't think I change anything because I wouldn't be able to continue to run this business in the manner that I do now without those experiences. And I think it just takes time to gain that experience and to appreciate it and to learn from it. Cause if you're not learning from it, then it doesn't matter what the fuck you're doing, whether it be bodybuilding or diving True. or whatever it is, take the experience, learn from it, continue forward, you know, and, and if, if you're going to have regrets, I mean, learn to deal with it, you know, move on. Yeah. The only, the, the, the yeah, that's that's really it. Like that's that's really well, it. That's what it's all about. Say, you know, people will say like, "I wish I did this. I wish I did that." It's like, well, what are you even worrying about that for? It's, it's in the past. You cannot change that. Yeah, what are you doing now? It, that's yeah. the only thing that matters. You know. So, yeah. Well, honestly, forget listen. About it. I can speak on my athletic prowess as a as a youth. I'm telling you, I would be fucking shit up right now. Let me be clear. I was a monster when I was young. So I'm going to just tell you straight up, I would be doing damage in the IFBB had I started at 18. No questions asked. You know, I I, I, I respect your answer, Robin. I love you because that's true. And no, 90% of the time, that would be the absolute truth. But just knowing what I used to be capable of, it's it's honestly comic book shit. And I, I don't say that to like toot my own horn. I was a phenomenal athlete with a ton of potential that I never got to tap into because I just wasn't ready for it. But had I been ready for it, my trajectory would have been vertical. There would not be a climb. It would have just been straight up. It would have took an elevator. That's, Dude, assume, I that's was, assuming your that's assuming your knees could handle all that mileage though. Oh, they were good knees back then. They were good knees. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was made out of rubber back then, bro. <laughs> Dude, I was like that too. I was an animal for year, like training wise. Dude, I was I was an absolute machine. There's nothing that I wouldn't do. Like the, a, a lot of people don't know. I actually graduated from the uh, from the Atlantic Police Academy in 2012. I graduated best all around cadet, a squad 38 in a, in a, in my squad of 37. And dude, I was a machine, bro. Like there was no stuff. Yeah. We would do morning training for an hour between six and seven o'clock in the morning. I believe it was. You'd go to class all day. Then we'd be go to the local gym down the road because the school gym just wasn't fucking good enough. We'd go to the hardcore gym down the road. Uh, Shout out to Terry at the uh, at the Iron uh, Iron Haven and PEI. Train for an hour and a half. Then I, I remember there was one guy that was uh, that was in our class or he was in another one of the classes and he he, he kind of gave us a little bit of disrespect. And I was one of the squad leaders. So I went to the PT trainer and I said, listen, this fucker's in my group today. Right. I pushed <laughs> that guy so hard that I made him puke. I was yelling at him so much while we were training that I had to stop and puke. And then I continued on <laughs> yelling at him. And I was like, buddy, I made you puke. You're laying there on the ground. I just finished puking my guts up and I'm still doing laps around you bro like right. there was no man look at what you made me do look at what you made me yeah. do <laughs> it was it was like that man when we would do riot shield training our instructors left for a couple of minutes we were literally bloody like they came back and they're like wow what the fuck is going on in here and i was like we're training what do you think is going on they were like this is not how it they they, they literally had to stop us and cancel class for the rest of the day <laughs> It that was sounds like weird. gladiator. It was. It was. I just. I was ready to go, man. I was. I was ready to go. It was. I. I and I know, Kareth, you were a serious athlete. Like, like, just the push. Just. Yeah. It's just no. There was just no stopping me, man. Yeah, and I mean that's just. It's a portion of who I am that I never really got to tap into as a youth. You know, um, it's just I know I would have been that much better. You know, um, things happen when it's time. I respect that. And I've had tons of success with bodybuilding, but just knowing how athletic and the potential I possessed, it's it's something that I wish I tapped into earlier. Well, you're tapping into it now. There's no question. No question. We still, we still got some miles. You're gonna are you gonna are you gonna beat your third place placing at the Olympia? Fuck yeah. 
Yeah, <laughs> like I, I ain't even gonna bite my tongue on that. No, fuck that. Yeah, right. yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. I love, I love, I love everybody that competes on stage. We can be friends later. I want to beat everybody. I want to send everybody home with not the first place trophy. Like whatever they finish, they finish. But I'm walking home. The trophy doesn't have a name, but it's coming home with me. It will have a name. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna name the trophy. So yeah. Lord willing, Lord willing, I name that trophy. No, hundred percent. Robin, you you got your sights set on on that goal this this season too, right? Like you're you're going after the Olympia placing. Oh yeah. It's like, you know, people keep asking me, I, I feel like, you know, pinky in the brain. It's like, what are you doing this year, Robin? I'm like, same thing I do every year, trying to get to the Olympia. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, right? I think you got an a awesome, good strategy, awesome though. plan. Yeah, it's an yeah. awesome plan. That's it. No, man, I think I think you got a good strategy this year, right? Like, I I don't know if you've you've announced it all. We've talked about it there. Um, but, well, you've said Toronto. Like, you've got that coming up. Yeah. So in New York, Toronto, Vancouver, and then uh, maybe Tampa, something like that. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Vancouver's one that uh, you know that's a sleeper show, man. We've talked about that before too. Like, that's a serious sleeper show. Yeah, yeah. People don't realize it's they don't. Van- Vancouver's last, it's one of the last shows, right? That's it's in July. July. It's like mid season. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's the perfect okay. time to come to Vancouver because it's so beautiful in BC. But I think people are just traumatized to do Canadian shows. Like they just don't want to come to Canada. So, why? Just, I, I love Canada. Know, man, it just, you know, it's, it's up north. You got you to gotta come up this way, you know? Yeah, I suppose. But I mean, for me, it's never been bad. No. Yeah. I don't know. Plus, you guys got it's... you guys got great food up there. Yeah, it just it's like it's like Kenzen said, it's a sleeper show. I mean, even even Toronto can be too. Just a, it just depends on who shows up, you know. Because if it's just a bunch of Canadian guys, I mean, that's cool and all, but we want it to be an international competition, right? We want to have some more heavy hitting guys to make it a exciting show. But, Regardless, if, if no one shows up, I'm happy to take the qualification. But I'm just saying, you know, it's more fun, it's more fun if you qualify by beating a couple guys that are good. <laughs> so, this is know. why you're going to end up with your Olympia qualification because you don't just want to take the win because nobody else shows up. You're doing the work to beat anybody that you stand next to, man. That's why you're going to end up with the qualification, dude. That's right, why it's going to happen for you. That's it. There well, you I'm go. Just, you know, I'm going to see what what Ross Flanagan's going to do this year, and I'll just chase him down and get that win. See, yeah. you're, you're not running from anybody. <laughs> Ain't no tail <laughs> tucking. Ain't no Wait, tail tucking. Going on there with Ross? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, nah, Ross is my boy. He, he's awesome. But because we were close in Toronto, so you know. Yeah, I got you guys. It's always it's always fun when you get to be uh, neck and neck like that, right? You know how it is. Right. He, he's from California, right? Yep. Nah, he's, he's in, in Texas. Texas. Okay. Texas. Texas. Okay. Yeah, yeah, he's in uh, Houston. Houston. Yeah, I believe in Houston. Okay. Houston. Yeah, yeah. I think he's taking uh, this year off, though. Yeah, sure. I think he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll have Hassan out there in uh, in Toronto, but conditioning's hit or miss, and that's a guy that you can beat in uh, in, in the conditioning department, right? If if he misses on conditioning, and you can stand next to him from a size standpoint, you know, you never know, man. Yeah, he's definitely there as far as size goes. You guys, you got, you got to be close in size. Oh yeah, yeah. It just, it's just different, you know. I mean, it's like you guys know how it is when you're looking at somebody else. You, you don't know what you're looking at because you think, well, that guy looks crazy, but then and that guy's looking at you and he's thinking the same thing. It just people have different proportions and people are built differently. So you, you're gonna notice the one thing that you don't have. You know, Hassan is very bubbly. So I just, I just look at him. I'm like, wow, I can't believe someone could be that bubbly. You know. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's different looks. And yeah, I mean, it comes down to what happens on that day, of course. Um, yeah. You know, as far as my mentality goes, I'm showing up with the mindset that they have to beat me. It's my show. So they have to beat me. It's my it's my home. They have to beat me here, you know, if they want to take that qualification. So I'm not I'm not worried about anybody. Obviously, there's there's no point of being worried about anybody because I can't control how they show up. But I can 100 percent control what I do and how I show up. So that's that's it. Love that's it. That's right, man. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Oh, yeah. And like and like and like we said, Hassan, we'll, we'll take him. He he's our adopted Canadian now, so it's still not not quite home turf, even though he's here. Not quite. Yeah, no, he's great. Yeah, we'll take him. We'll take him. 
But oh, no, yeah. man, that, that that's going to be a good show. I'm still planning on traveling for that one. I got to start thinking about booking my travel for that, actually. Yep. I yep. want to be there in Toronto for sure. You better be. <laughs> You're right. I do. I do. I got to get there, man. I This this last year, after covering everything that I covered, I got to get to at least one show, and I want it to be a Canadian show. Yeah. Yeah. Should do a live. Uh, should do a live Canadian beef podcast or something. That'd be cool. Let's do it, man. Yeah, I was gonna say definitely break up. out break out the mic, man. People want to people want to see you interact with the the uh, the live talent, man. But uh, it's it's something that we'd probably pull off yeah. at. Uh, I mean, I don't know, probably like maybe maybe down a pure or something right like that like that. We could probably figure that out. Yep, we could definitely. Yeah, do that. that'd be all right. Yeah, that'd be all right. We'll figure it out. But listen, gentlemen, it's getting uh, it's getting late for actually. It's funny, all of us. <laughs> that doesn't happen often. <laughs> often there's somebody like like Xavier's like only nine hours behind or something. He's like just getting up. And but for all of us, it's getting late. So listen, we should uh, we should call it here. But uh, all right. I really appreciate you guys coming on. This was fucking wicked. I really really enjoyed this, and uh, we should do it again. Anytime, let me know. Yeah, this is awesome. Yeah, yeah this is great, man. Good. Thanks no, for the honest. invite, brother. Absolutely, absolutely, Tonio. Yeah. You only a couple of weeks to go, man. Best of luck to you. We'll be watching and uh, crush it, man. It crush yeah. it, dude. You're looking <laughs> great, man. Proud of the Appreciate status. You, go after everybody. Uh-huh. Nobody, <laughs> nobody's safe. Nobody's safe, bro. Go at them. Go at them. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, yeah, I'll see you in a couple weeks exciting. in New York. I'll see you in a couple oh, yeah, weeks no. in New York. I'm coming for you too. <laughs> oh, shit. Don't worry, I'm coming too. There it is. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Okay. The hunt is on, man. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, Sorry. we'll see how we'll see how it goes, and we'll follow up. Yeah. All right. Hey, All right. hey, listen. If nothing else, man, from from a two twelve brother to another two twelve brother. Listen, dude. I nothing but respect for you, man. You took the step, and you showed people that it's possible. And dude, you're making us, you know, shorter guys look proud. So, you know, or feel proud, I should say. So just keep doing what you're doing, Tony, old man. The world is your oyster. Eat up. Yeah, most definitely. Appreciate it. Eat up. Eat up, bro. Keep doing your thing. Until you get to New York. (laughs) I'm really turning up to be a party in the city. (laughs) All right now. All right, man. He's a, it's a good thing that he. It's a good thing he got the uh, the Brazil coming up because otherwise he'd be sleeping on the shit you're saying, man. Oh <laughs> man, shit. let him sleep. <laughs> let him sleep. <laughs> let him sleep. So this is a double way. I'm blasting. <laughs> All right. Well, Easy. listen. I'm waiting. I'm waiting because I I know what I I can still hear what they said last year. All right. <laughs> Kenza, Kenza, what? Kenza, 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 what they say last year? What 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 did they last year? Last yeah, year they, they said, said last year. Last year what they said was if Kareth had stood next to Tony O on the stage, mm. then Kareth would have won. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> That's what they said. That's what they said, man. That's what I I'm don't not even, pulling any I, punches. I, Look, I don't I don't even know punches. who they are. I don't even know who they are. <laughs> I can, There's only I can, one way I, to find <laughs> out. <laughs> I can I can tell you who they are. But no, but, man, it, that was la- that was last year. Would it be the same outcome this year? We all got a lot bigger, dude. Mm-hmm. Big game, oh, honey. I, 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 don't, I don't even talk about my weight, but it's it's good. It's good. We're we're lean and we're a lot heavier. But uh, you know what? That goes both ways. But you know what? I say, I say, I say for the for the people that gave us their time, we owe it to them. We should stand next to each other, regardless. Right? Yeah. Hell yeah. Regardless, we'll, we'll regardless. Stage and drop thing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Steve will probably Steve will probably let us do it, man. But you know what? Regardless, regardless, we should we should do it just just to show them, you know, not just how far you've come, but how far two twelve has come. Right. You know, all fairness. And Robin, we'll see you on the eighteenth. <laughs> Don't act like you're in prep. We'll see you on the eighteenth, Robin. <laughs> I'll see you there. <laughs> All right, brother. Gentlemen, thank you very much. You we'll uh we'll 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 catch up in a bit. Good luck, boys. All right. See All you guys. Right, sir. Good night, guys. All right. Later. All right.